Chris, what is our third main topic today? This one comes from Clavel. I think it's safe to say The Mandalorian is still the gold standard when it comes to Star Wars TV. The first two seasons have been amazing, and the ending of season two is one of the best moments in TV history to me. Did you see the article where the cast of the show are saying that the new season is the darkest and best yet? What do you think that tells us about where the show is going? Uh, do you think it can live up to that promise? All right, thanks for sending that in, Clavel. And yeah, look, The Mandalorian, there I don't think there's any debate. I mean, everybody can have a lot of different opinions, about, but, but I really don't think there's a lot of debate here. The Mandalorian, he's right, is the gold standard of Star Wars television. Even season two, who everybody changed their damn tune on season two once the, the Luke Skywalker thing happened at the end, right? Because in the first half of season one, I heard a lot of bitching. I heard a lot of whining and playing. Oh, uh, it's this, it's this, this. I'm like, guys, this is an homage to the old Western. This is the gunfighter going through the West. Every episode is supposed to be its own little self-contained story. My God, that episode with the freaking ice spiders? I love that episode, but I heard so many people complaining about it, but I thought this is, I thought, even better than season one, and they're moving through it, and then people started to get on board with it a little bit, and then that final episode happened, and yeah, the internet blew up when Luke Skywalker shows up, and then all of a sudden, everybody was complaining about season two. This is the best season ever, uh, like after, but whatever, whatever got you on the train, welcome aboard, there was a lot of room, but it is the gold standard. But it left some really interesting things. The whole story about Mandalore. Um, really, what is... We heard a lot of references to the things Moff Gideon did, but really, what what are these travesties that we're going to see? Of course, we've got the whole story of Bo-Katan going on, and how's that? And now there's drama between Bo-Katan and Din because he's got the Darksaber, and he can't just give it to her, even though he wants to. Not allowed to take it from him. She's got to beat him to take it from. So all this hanging drama. So it's not surprising to hear them say, yeah, they're going to up the drama in this. This comes to us from the folks over at Joe Blow who write the following. There is even a uh, three talking about season three is even better than the previous ones. Pedro Pascal teased. It's safe to say that you're going to love it. Carl Weathers added that the Mandalorian season three will feel fuller and have a lot more heft it's so dense with so much action but also character Giancarlo Esposito said that the new episodes will be larger than ever and it's just an expansion in many ways of last season it's a great season that has great ideas great uh teasing and great tips for the future not to be left out, Katie Sackhoff, of course, from my all-time favorite television show, Battlestar Galactica, had just a single word when asked to describe the vibe of the third season, and she said, dark. And that comes to us from the folks over at Joe Blow. Now, once again, let's point out, actors saying their thing is good. Okay, <laughs> we yeah, never I mean, she, like, okay, we get that. But with all the stuff that we just talked about, like, we can kind of sense where season three has to go. They've got to go back to Mandalore. And even in the book of Boba Fett, they kind of set up that Din's journey needs to take him back to Mandalore to re to revive his honor now, right? So all roads were leading to Mandalore anyway. So it seems like that's where they're heading and everything looks really good. Uh, I don't know what just happened there, but that was pretty funky. So <laughs> everything's heading back to Mandalore and I expect things to get dark. I expect to see a lot of what the atrocities were done. And I expect to see a lot of drama here. So this is... Again, actors saying their thing is really good. Okay, but still, it's good to hear. Rob, you hear these comments. What are you expecting out of season three of Mandalorian? Well, as I said, I mean, I, I really liked that show. I, I thought it got better and better and better as it went along. That Bill Burr episode when he confronts oh, the, Bill the Burr Imperial stuff officer was, great, was amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I also have to judge things by the Hot Toys uh, aggregate. <laughs> I, I think that there, there have been more Hot Toys figures made from the Mandalorian than just about anything else. Um, they j just came out with a Moff Gideon figure. I mean, I never thought in my life I would really be eager to buy a Giancarlo Esposito action figure, but here we are. Now you probably have three. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now you got to get a Gus Fring, and now if they make a grief, if they make grief, if they make Carl Weathers, then hey, you know we're doing well. But um, I, uh, I think the show's been a lot of fun. It's obviously it's been like you pointed out, John. The fact that they leaned into their episodic nature of the old westerns, like Have Gun, Will Travel, or something like yeah. that, really, I think, made the show a lot of fun. And obviously, the reintroduction of Boba Fett happened in it, and they 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 keep giving us the, the supporting cast that they've been building out are really interesting, having Dave Filoni's influence from Clone Wars and things like that, and Rebels, 
injecting a lot of these storylines into the show to sort of make everything canonical has made it a lot of fun. And um, who isn't looking forward to season three after that ending? And I mean, John even Favreau. I, even I, you know, the, the old man with the hard heart when Luke, Luke Skywalker shows up. Come on, man. I mean, who didn't feel like a 10 year old? I was 10 when I first met Luke Skywalker, but that was awesome. Um, Chris, you had a chance to read these comments and stuff like that. What do you take away from this? Oh, man, I'm hyped for this to be darker. I love this show so much, and I do think it's the gold standard of what Star Wars is, right? No matter how you feel about these shows, I know a lot of people, too, are like, the Mandalorian's overrated, and I feel those people are just trying to be edgy because objectively, even if you don't like the story, this is beautiful filmmaking or television making, right? They're mini movies. They're gorgeous to look at. This show handles B-plots and sub-characters better than anything I've ever seen. It handles them so, so well without detracting from our main through line, which is this is the story of a single dad in space. It's really what it is. And what I think is interesting is no one's touching on what I assume is going to be the darkest storyline. We saw how Grogu acts when his papa and the Internet's papa gets strangled or hurt or maimed. Right. He loses his shit now. And he is not going the way of the Jedi, it seems. So how do you handle something so powerful that is no longer having that sort of guidance, but only has familial guidance now. We've I'm, seen how that can go astray with other people who are Jedi and how they've let down their families. How's that going to work here for this chosen family? Now, but, you know, in Grogu's defense, you know, like once he knocks out the Rancor, then, then they cuddle. cuddles up to it. Yeah, then, then, then they he cuddle, cuddles with her. Then right? they're sweet little babies. <laughs> However. And by the way, he's eating the children of frog lady like yeah. poor frog lady yeah. who's just trying to have offspring he's an adorable menace he's an adorable but i mean if moth, if moth gideon comes after him if bo katan starts fighting him for the dark saber is grogu going to understand that hey this is just dad fighting with a friend so they can get their rightful place on the throne it's like when they walk in on mommy and daddy exactly they're just, play fighting. They're just wrestling don't worry about it you know how is this all gonna pan out by the way are we finally going to see in season three how the hell he got out of the Jedi Temple? Yeah. Like, that, oh, that is still so. like, like, but I thought that before. I thought we were okay. Now we're going to find out how to get out of the Jedi, Jedi Temple. I really hope we get that in season three. I actually, with the opening of Obi Wan, I kind of thought maybe we might find out in Obi Wan how, how Baby Yoda got they out. They light but, a fire and then they just, they can't get to That's it, so right. The, the Force, the Vader, Anakin cannot work <laughs> through fire. That settles all that. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? We're hearing this is better than the previous seasons. That it's got more heft, more depth. And according to Katie Sackhoff, it's darker. Are you excited for season three? Do you think maybe this series is running out of steam? Maybe it took a little win out of your sales after watching Book of Boba Fett. Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Upside. You guys remember a while ago, I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible, easy to use app for buying groceries, dining out, or even buying gas. And with every purchase you make at those shops, restaurants, or gas stations, you are earning cash back thanks to Upside. When I started using Upside, I was incredibly impressed with just how easy the app is to use and how easy it is to start accumulating cash that I can deposit directly into my bank account, PayPal, Amazon gift card, many different ways. And like I said, I was incredibly incredibly impressed at just how easy and simple and straightforward the process is to start getting cash back now. To get started, just download the free Upside app in the Apple App Store or Google Play. Use my promo code CAMPIA, that's C-A-M-P-E-A, -E and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Once you've got the app, just claim an offer for whatever it is you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with a debit card or a credit card, and get Paid. Download the free Upside app and use promo code Campia Show to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. That's five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more using the promo code Campia Show.